This screencast is an explanation of integration by parts. Integration by parts is a technique of integration we use when we have two different kinds of functions being multiplied by each other. So you'll notice in this example that I have a power function, x to the fourth, times a natural log function. And I really can't do any UDU substitution, so we use what's called integration by parts. Here's the basic pattern. The integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. And you're probably thinking, well, that looks more complicated than what we're starting with. But it actually makes things a lot easier. So here's what we're going to do. Let's let u equal the natural log of x. So everything else is going to be dv. That means that dv is, hang on a minute. dv is going to be x to the fourth dx. Now you notice that over in my answer I need u, and I need v, and I need du. So to get du, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of this u equation. So the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x dx. And to get v, I'm going to take the antiderivative of this. So v is going to equal 1 fifth x to the fifth. OK, so now let's look, make it all fit together. I'm going to do u times v. So there's u times v. So that's 1 fifth x to the fifth natural log of x minus the integral of v du. So here's v, integral of 1 fifth x to the fifth. And here's du times 1 over x dx. And you'll notice that now I don't have any x's and natural logs getting multiplied together. So I'm going to do 1 fifth x to the fifth natural log of x minus 1 fifth the integral of x to the fourth dx. And my final answer I'm going to get when I integrate this piece right here. So my final answer is 1 fifth x to the fifth times the natural log of x minus 1 25th x to the fifth plus c. So you need to memorize this pattern. The integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Now, how did I know to let natural log equal u? Well, think about this weird word right here, liate. The first choice for u is going to be a natural log function. Then we're going to do inverse trig functions, if one of those is in there. Then we'll do an algebraic function, like x to the fifth or 5x cubed. Next, we would choose a trig function. And last, we would choose an exponential. So when you're trying to decide what to let u equal, go down this list. Always go for natural log of x first. If there isn't one of those, look for an inverse trig. Then look for algebraic. Then look for trig. Then look for exponential. OK, so let's look at this example right here. According to Lie 8, we should let u equal x, which means that dv is everything else e to the 2x dx, and du will equal dx. And the antiderivative of this is going to be 1 half e to the 2x. And so I'm going to do u times v minus v du. u times v is going to be 1 half x e to the 2x minus the integral of v du. And we can integrate that now. So my final answer is 1 half x e to the 2x minus 1 fourth e to the 2x plus c. 
Now sometimes you need to do it more than once and it can get really confusing but fortunately I have a method that will keep everything organized and really saves you a lot of memorization. So we have x cubed sine x. According to Lie 8 we should let x cubed be u. Now I'm going to do a little table here. I'm going to put u on the left and dv on the right. Underneath I'm going to put x cubed and then this is sine x. I'm going to leave off the dx. That's just understood to be there. In this column, I'm going to take the derivative. And in this column, I'm going to take the antiderivative. So I'm going to go 3x squared. And the derivative of sine is cosine x. Then I'm going to go 6x. And the antiderivative of cosine is sine. Whoop, I made a mistake. That antiderivative of positive sine is negative cosine. So that's going to be negative sign right there, right? OK, and then I have 6. And then the antiderivative of negative sign is positive cosine. And the derivative of 6 is 0. And the antiderivative of cosine is sine. Now, I can't go any farther than 0. So here's what we do. I draw diagonals like this. And then I go straight across. And this, then I put in this sign pattern. Plus, I always start with plus. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. And what this is saying is that's the first u times v minus the vdu. But we keep going okay, until we finally get this last one. That's our integral of vdu. And so our final answer is going to be negative x cubed cosine x minus a negative is positive 3x squared sine x plus 6x cosine x minus 6 sine x. And this would be plus the integral, but it's the integral of 0, so we just leave it off and do a plus c. So that is the antiderivative of x cubed sine x dx. All right, let me do one last example. OK, according to Lie 8, we should let a trig function be u before an exponential. So the derivative of sine is cosine. And the antiderivative of e to the 2x is 1 half e to the 2x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the antiderivative of e to the 2x is 1 fourth e to the 2x. And right there, I'm going to stop. Because can you see that I'm going to just go round and round in circles and repeat myself? I'm never going to get this down to 0. But we're OK, because watch what happens. Put my sign pattern in here. OK, so we have our original problem, the integral of e to the 2x sine x dx is equal to sine of x times 1 half e to the 2x. So I'll do 1 half e to the 2x sine of x minus cosine x times 1 fourth e to the 2x. And then minus the integral of this. So it's going to be minus 1 fourth the integral of e to the 2x sine x dx. I'm going to squeeze that dx in there. There we go. OK, now check this out. 
this integrand is exactly the same as that integrand. So if I add one fourth of these integrals to both sides, I'm going to get five fourths integral e to the two x sine x dx is equal to one half e to the two x sine x minus one fourth e to the two x cosine x. And so that means that one integral of e to the two x sine x is going to equal four fifths times all of this. So it's going to be two fifths e to the two x sine x minus one, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm multiplying by four fifths, so it's going to be one fifth e to the two x cosine x plus c. So when you have trig functions that you know are just going to cycle over and over again, watch and stop when your integrand is going to match what you started with.